CTV News is officially in crisis mode. The man responsible for ushering Lisa Laflamme out the door may actually be on the way out himself. More brands are piling on in support of Lisa. Petitions with hundreds of thousands of signatures calling for her to be reinstated are still gaining traction. And now a new Globe and Mail investigation is reporting that there were multiple workplace reviews in the past few years under Michael Melling's leadership, leaving many people wondering, is this fire ever going to come to an end or is it just beginning? Hey, it's Brandon Gones, and I'm going to break down everything that's unfolded and still unfolding since Lisa Laflamme was let go. But before I go any further, I need you to do a few things like subscribing to this channel, tap that notification bell, make sure to like this video, and also make sure to follow us across all of our social media. The details are in the description below. National backlash to the ousting of Lisa Laflamme after a 35-year career at CTV has been swift and extremely damaging for the network. Her infamous homemade video posted on Twitter announcing the news has now amassed more than 4.5 million views. All hands now point to this man, Michael Melling, for this mess. So let's start off with the blowback. After two weeks of intense backlash and international media attention regarding CTV and parent company Bell Media being accused of ageism and sexism in the ousting of Lisa Laflamme, the network finally took action. The head of CTV News, Michael Melling, was officially put on leave. But the announcement, which was pushed out late on Friday, August 26th, gave off two very different tones. The internal memo announced by Karen Moses, Bell Media's Senior Vice President of Content, Development and News, said, Michael Melling decided to take leave from his current role effective immediately to spend time with his family. The memo goes on to say, his decision reflects our shared desire to support the newsroom and do what's best to help the team move past the current circumstances to focus on delivering the stories that matter to Canadians. However, over on LinkedIn, the CEO of parent company Bell Canada, Mirko Bibic, released this statement with language that was much more stern. We have begun an independent review involving confidence confidential interviews with all newsroom employees who choose to participate. Any necessary changes that become evident will be implemented swiftly to ensure a respectful, unified workplace. Bibic went on to say, Michael Melling is on leave effective immediately pending the outcome of the workplace review that is proceeding. Two statements, but two very different tones, which begs the question, did Melling actually take leave to be with family? or was he put on leave because of his performance? Which brings us to this workplace review that Bell Media is planning. Well, according to a new Globe and Mail article, this actually isn't the first time the company has had to investigate the workplace culture of its newsrooms. The headline says it all. Bell Media newsrooms have been involved in at least three previous formal reviews over workplace culture. The Globe reports that one of those three previous reviews was focused on the workplace culture of CP24 in late 2020. It's important to note Michael Melling was the general manager of both CP24 and CTV Toronto during that time period between December of 2018 to December of 2021. That particular workplace review was initiated after an anonymous letter was slipped under the door of the local union office, which represents some CP24 employees. We here at the BG Show have seen that specific letter, and in it, it calls out senior managers by name at the local All News Network, and even Michael Melling himself. The letter details disturbing instances of poor treatment of staff by management, highlighting allegations of bullying, verbal abuse, intimidation, and even racism. Part of the letter reads, the environment at CP24 is nothing less than toxic. From the assignment desk to the managers, employees feel intimidated, frustrated, and verbally assaulted by managers. Now, according to The Globe, Bell Media launched its own internal review, but that one did not find any issues. The company hired an external investigator to conduct their own investigation, and that investigation, according to The Globe, found interactions sometimes described as direct and harsh from leaders. It also found that there is a stressful environment in the newsroom where yelling, raised voices, and outbursts can occur. Despite the serious accusations laid out by newsroom staff in that letter, and the following investigation that took place, Michael Melling would end up being promoted to head the entire CTV News department in January of 2022. The revelation of these previous workplace reviews comes as journalists at CTV News hired a human rights lawyer to send a letter to Bell Canada CEO Mirko Bibic. That letter was sent recently on August 22nd, and in it, 
It details even more allegations of a toxic workplace, this time in the national newsroom since Michael Melling's promotion. Part of that letter reads, these well-respected journalists have concerns about denigrating comments and adverse treatment in the workplace, with intimidation and reprisal being a common response to anyone who questions the decision-making or processes of the new vice president of CTV News. Now, it's no secret that legacy media is going through a transformative state where viewership on TV is declining, as more people have chosen to cut the cord. That has led to extra cost pressures on networks to be more agile and to cut costs. Now, could Michael Melling have been feeling that pressure to rein in costs? No doubt. Even Mirko Bibic in his post highlighted these challenges, writing, Broadcasting in Canada is undergoing massive change and Bell Media needs to adapt or be left behind. He goes on to say this, we are at a crossroads where viewing behaviors have changed dramatically and traditional broadcasting is under severe stress worldwide. But the question remains, if in fact Bell Media's directive to their media division was to transform how things were operating, then was Michael Melling and the baggage he carried the right person to do that job? With the lack of support from frontline employees internally, it's no surprise that any move to transform the way things are done has ended up so messy, blowing up in the network's face. What Canadians are witnessing at CTV is a public display of what many people have experienced, but not in such a public manner. In 2022, it's safe to say, much of the world has accepted that ageism, sexism, and racism are things that have no place in any workplace, especially not in one whose industry is to hold people and institutions accountable. The shock that an institution, the media, could portray the same ugliness that they themselves call out in their reports hasn't sat well with Canadians. Brands alike have seen this and are capitalizing on the moment by choosing to show where their moral compass lies. Dove Canada, for example, started a national campaign promoting the message that aging is beautiful and that we should all embrace that process, including having gray hair. Fast food chain Wendy's entered the chat by turning the hair color of their iconic mascot gray and even letting the public know that they stand behind Lisa Laflamme. It's the kind of negative attention that no corporation wants, especially one whose business model is about attracting viewers. Which really leaves this last question. For a network fighting for relevance in the age of social media and fragmented audiences, can CTV actually recover from this? Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.